<clears throat> as I'm sure you're aware, there are all sorts of websites uh, available on the internet. And one of them is called the, the Beatles Bible. And on that website, it dubs John Lennon's song, Imagine, as the most iconic of songs. According to Wikipedia, another internet possibility, as you, I'm sure you're aware of, Lennon uh, once explained that that song was anti-religion or religious, anti-nationalistic, anti-conventional, and anti-capitalistic. Uh, but he said it was a song that got sugar-coated uh, into acceptability. Well, in 1971, Lenin canonized the idea that if only we could imagine, if only we could imagine a world not bound by heaven and hell, not looking to the transcendent, we could live for today and everyone would be at peace. Well, of course, he, 1971, he was writing this in the midst of the Vietnam War that was raging. And young people whose, religion, whose rebellion boggled the minds of their elders, they celebrated that song, Imagine, as an anthem, an anthem of what had to be eliminated. Lenin's proposals for what could be eliminated, if you will, and what we needed to do came at the end of each of the uh, verses. And so he said things like, living for today, living life in peace, sharing all the world. And his final goal was, and the world will live as one. It was, it was magical. It was magical. It touched people's hearts. Well, we just heard a 2,500-year-old 2500 year version of that same vision, if you will, in our first reading from Isaiah. While Lenin was suggesting that some version of socialist anarchy could solve the world's problems, the prophet Isaiah promotes an awareness of God's love, God's love as the way to human flourishing and joy. Lenin wants to be rid of dreams of heaven. Isaiah wants people to imagine how God's loving power, working through them, can satisfy all our human hungers. So if Isaiah's vision sounds like a sugar-coated uh, dream, Jesus brings us back down to earth uh, in the gospel reading from Luke when he wants to send out 72 evangelists to proclaim the reign of God. And so from the get-go, Jesus tells them to pray for, what, for more missionaries to do this, that there's too few of them and we need more. And then rather than fantasize about kind of a simplistic harmony in the world, Jesus lays it out for them in the stark realism of a prophet tells them, don't be fooled. I'm sending you out as lambs among wolves. That this vision is not an easy one. Now, every profession uh, has its own standards. And so Jesus had certain qualifications for how to do it. What did he tell us? In order to do this mission, be ready to let go of money bags, let go of sacks and sandals. Keep it simple, he says. Um, and this world needs, has a great need for missioners, needs for laborers who will bring to life the kingdom of God, the reign of God, in the way that Jesus himself did. And Jesus sent out a group during his own lifetime, and he sends us to continue that work. We're in that same category, if you will. We're that same profession. Today, we are the ones with the message, peace to this household. Peace is a simple greeting to give, but a monumental task to accomplish. We have to do it over and over again. But world peace really does begin uh, in ourselves, our families, our neighborhoods. So we're the ones who, through the power of Jesus, can make even the demons subject to us. 
And there are lots of demons roaming around in our world, aren't there? There are the demons of long-time resentments against a brother or a sister, a mother or a father, a son or a daughter, in-law or outlaw, maybe a member of my community, that keeps me self-righteous and isolated. They're the demons of addiction to booze, to medications, pornography, an unhealthy relationship, work, so many other things that stoke the fires of feeling unfree and often tortured. They're the demons of greed, of grudges that enslave me to possessions and positions and keep me from relationships that bring life to me and to others. So these are the kinds of things that enslave us and are really a contemporary way, of, I think, of talking about Jesus' description of how to do discipleship. He tells us, carry no purse, no bag, no sandals. In other words, he tells us to travel light. So let go of the baggage that you and I carry around and that keeps us from the freedom of the sons and daughters of God, of being the disciples that Jesus has called us to be. Paul, in his letter to the Galatians, describes us, you and me, as a new creation. Our lives are meant to be transformed. And like Paul, we need to be willing to be crucified to these things, to those things that do, in fact, enslave us and keep us from bringing peace. We must be willing to be crucified to some of the standards of our world, standards that stand in opposition, opposition to the reign of God. It's in this way that the cross enters our life. So it's a gradual, lifelong process of transformation that we engage in. And it's a process of transformation through the cross, the cross ultimately of discipleship oftentimes. So the challenge, I think, in the gospel today is to travel light. I, Judy gave us that reminder. Uh, be aware of the baggage you carry around, that I carry around. And so at this time in my life, this morning, today, what piece or pieces of baggage am I carrying around that I need to let go of so that I might more freely help Jesus with that plentiful harvest? And in doing that, bring the peace that surpasses all understanding.